magnets got you down? Yeah, join the club. I told my kids to keep those magnetic toys away from their electronics. But did they listen? <sighs> okay, those magnetic problems aside, we all know that magnets and magnetic fields can wreak all sorts of havoc with a variety of electronic designs. And one way we can keep those pesky magnetic issues at bay is by using non-magnetic connectors. But where can we find connectors that are invisible to magnets? Right here, my friends. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Magnets and magnetic fields can cause big problems in medical, scientific, industrial, space, and quantum computing applications. But using a non-magnetic connector can help solve these issues. In this episode of Chalk Talk, John Riley from Samtech and I discuss the construction of non-magnetic connectors and how you can use non-magnetic connectors in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Samtech. Hi, John. Thank you so much for joining me. Good afternoon, and thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about non-magnetic plating today. But John, before we get started, what all will we be covering today? So today we're going to talk about why Samtech is talking about non-magnetic plating. We're going to talk about what a non-magnetic connector is, maybe what industries will typically request a non-magnetic connector, how we can create that or how we make it non-magnetic, and then how Samtech can help you design a solution that fits your application with magnetic uh, interference concerns. Fantastic. Now, John, for my audience that may not know, can you give us a refresher on Samtech as well? Sure. Samtech is a private connector company headquartered here in the United States. We make a broad line of electronic interconnects and cable assemblies. We have over 40 locations around the world. We work with multiple industries and we can create and make unique solutions that fit your application. So at the heart of this chalk talk are EMI concerns, right? John, is it time to get out my tinfoil hat? It's not yet. No, EMI is definitely a concern. And when we talk about magnetics in general, electromagnetic interference comes up. Electromagnetic interference occurs because of the relationship between electricity and magnetism. All electric flow produces a magnetic field. And then as the electrons become smaller and faster and more tightly packed, they become more sensitive and more susceptible to these effects, which cause the EMI. We're talking about the connectors themselves and not being affected by that. Great. Now, we aren't just talking about magnetic fields around a wire, are we? No. And if you go back to physics and original electrical engineering classes and how current or power goes through a wire, that will create the magnetic field, right? So that is what maybe feeds into the EMI concerns. It's not that. We're talking about, again, the influence of a magnetic field coming back into the connector or how that connector that could be magnetic could affect your signal. I see. Now, what kind of magnets are we talking about here? We're talking about connectors that are invisible to magnets. If you have a magnetic field around them, we want connectors that don't contain the materials or won't be affected by that magnetic force. So when it comes to the construction of Samtech interconnects, what kind of plating are we looking at? Can we take a closer look at an example of this? Sure. And that's where kind of our conversation today is, is really going to kind of deep dive. In the construction, it's plastic, metal pins, and plating to accommodate how we're transferring the signal. And it's in that plating is where we start to deep dive the materials that are susceptible to magnetic fields. The insulator body is, is a plastic PBT or an LCP type of plastic. The contactor terminal is a, typically a copper base material, could be a brass or, or something similar. But it's in that plating where traditional platings are, are copper, nickel, gold, tin, silver, or palladium. So can we talk a bit more about these magnetic metals? Yeah, the magnetic metals that we're concerned about and the three elements that are susceptible to magnetic fields are iron, cobalt, and nickel. 
There's alloys that, that can also contain these metals. And so they can also be susceptible to magnetic fields. But the one that we'll be talking about most is the nickel plating. So can you explain this a bit more? How are these metals magnetic? If you get down to the elemental construction of these, the atomic construction, it's how the electrons spin, not just their orbit rotation, but how they spin around the nucleus. And so because they all spin in the same direction, they're susceptible to a aligning in the grains of those metals. So in that iron, cobalt, and nickel, because of this electron spin, it makes them susceptible to that strong magnetism. In these metals, they create a small magnetic field in the domains, in the grain structure of the metals as they're plated down. When they're plated, they may be aligned randomly. When a magnetic field is applied or they come in contact with a magnetic field, those domains can align and kind of create that north-south poles of a magnetic field. And so once they align, then they can become magnetic or be more susceptible to magnetism. So what kind of applications are we looking at when it comes to these non-magnetic solutions? Samtech sells into all types of industries from industrial, datacom, medical, aerospace. But where we see the most interest or the most questions, do them in order, it would be medicals first, aerospace and defense type of applications would be second. And then it would be close between computers, semiconductors and instrumentation would be third as far as what we see. So John, let's talk about those medical applications you mentioned. What does that include? For Samtech, the most medical applications that we see are related to imaging. A MRI machine, the medical resonance imaging, it's in the word. The magnetic piece is guiding the, the photons through to create the image. And so any stray magnetic field here could potentially distort or move those image photons and create a distorted image. So having a giant magnetic field to help create the image, and then if you had an influence of something outside of that, if it's in the connector, if it's in the cable, if it's in the hardware outside of that, it can become a concern. This even goes back to if you look at some of the old warning signs as you go into an MRI, no metal on your body, no loose jewelry, no pins or, or anything in your pockets. Very concerned with that because of the strong magnetic field that are used in, in the MRIs. It can pull these things and they can become projectiles. And so it even goes as far as really old could be tattoos that contain metal in the ink. They had warning signs that it could move that metal in the ink. So there's concerns and there's warning signs all over for metals that could be magnetic or magnetized and pulled around the MRI. You also mentioned industrial and science areas. Can you explain that a bit more as well? In the industrial and science world, we see that also in some sort of imaging or guiding type of principle. And so for a scanning electron microscope, it would use a magnetic field to guide the electrons through the lens. So as you're trying to sense what is being inspected, we also see that in, in like the large hadron collider where the photons or the atoms or the elements that are spinning around the giant collider are all guided by super magnets. The one in Switzerland is in the image shown is 1600 superconducting magnets in that circuit that are guiding everything. So any additional things that could be magnetized or could be magnetic could distort that projection of the electrons through the microscope, or it could distort the projection of the elements as they're working on new science. That makes sense. Now, what about space applications? I would imagine that magnets can cause issues there. It's definitely the magnets or even the magnetic fields that come into play, things floating around in space. They're either guiding a communication signal, they're guiding light signals for the telescopes, and those all use magnets to help align things. The lower level of magnetism can affect the circuitry itself. And so if there's stray magnetic fields flying through space, they could turn a connector, create a magnetic field in the connector or affect it with a magnetism. Are there any other applications where this comes into play? 
we're seeing concerns in the quantum computing realm. And quantum computing is a, is a little different, right? So it's taking a single qubit, and as they're sensing that, where a classic bit is zeros and ones, a quantum bit can jump multiple superpositions of, of zero and one. That is a single photon, more or less. Any stray effect could change its position. So if a zero and one or on and off is a concern, if you're multiplying that position, then you have more chances of affecting your computation, affecting the reading that's coming out of that. The construction of these and where they're used and the temperatures that are needed for quantum computing have a lot of effect on when we'll see more applications like that. But knowing that it's even more sensitive of a qubit position, anything else that can affect that will affect your reading or your results on the other side. So can we talk a bit about the construction of these connectors? What does that look like? So if we go back to the plating, we talked about the plastics, the metal base pins, and the plating that are used. So the concern in the, the main area is in that plating. And Samtech uses a electrolysis or electrolytic types of inline plating. And we use a nickel phosphorus as an undercoat really for porosity. It's the barrier between the copper layer and the gold layer or the tin layer. Especially in the gold layer, the copper wants to migrate into the gold layer or vice versa. They want to merge together. And so if we don't have that nickel inner layer, then we don't prevent that. And you don't want to dilute the gold in the connector for your conductivity. And so we're using this nickel barrier layer to prevent that copper migration to the surface of the connector pin. Are there any special adjustments that we need to consider when it comes to these connectors? Samtech will take care of that when we're doing the plating options. And so the ferromagnetism associated with the nickel, we want to reduce that. And so we can do that either by creating an alloy, creating a, a phosphorus alloy, or we can change the different options to, to reduce the grain size. So the smaller we can make those domains or the more spread out by creating an alloy, the better potential we have to disrupt that alignment of the domains. And so we want to break those dipoles. We don't want them to align into the poles and become magnetic. And so Samtech will change the nickel alloy to do that. So John, how do you verify that this actually works? We can do that a couple ways and, and we do that continuously through the run. At a general way that we would verify this is with X-ray fluorescence. We can check the deposits and make sure that we have the right percentage of the phosphorus that we use, and we can check the thickness in the alloy to make sure that the concentration is what we need to stop that alignment of the dipoles. We'll also use a magnetoscope, and that's to check the magnetic permeability of the plated parts. And it will sense if there's any magnetic field or magnetic permeability in that connector. So what non-magnetic products does Samtech offer? 20 or 30% of what Samtech does is modifying our standard parts to fit your application. Call those altered standard products or ASPs or our nomenclature for it. And this allows us to take your requirements and apply the technology to what makes the most sense for your application. And so any of these are a question that you could reach out to and ask, I have this unique solution. I need help with this. And that's where Samtech wants to bring that technology and capability together to make sure that you have that solution that fits all your application needs. Fantastic. Now, what kind of options do I have in this space? For Samtech, the most typical option I mentioned earlier is the nickel phosphorus. Talked a little bit about the electroplating lines that slide the pins through that as we're plating them. Problem with that is it's a little slower process, but that's where we go through and verify with the checks that we mentioned. But an electroless nickel phosphorus would be for the small batch, kind of the RF world where you're doing individual discrete components. We could, and we've seen customers request removing the nickel from the equation. To do that, though, you're going to have that concern with the copper migrating to the gold. And so one way we've seen customers request that is older military applications where put more on very high gold content and very high copper content to reduce or stop that migration or delay it in a long way. 
There are also other alloys out there. A couple mentioned here are the Tri-M3. It's a copper, tin, zinc alloy as a barrier layer. Extalix has a nickel tungsten alloy. Those are all working on breaking up that grain size, breaking up the size of the dipoles and preventing them from really aligning by mixing in these other materials. That's kind of goes into that nano grain size. If we can reduce them, reduce those grain sizes of the metals themselves in the plating, we can again kind of disrupt that alignment or make it a lot harder for it to be aligned. All this is going to come down to the science. It's material science. It's taking apart the magnetic materials that may be in a connector and having to replace them with something that doesn't have that effect. So we have a good material science team working on what's the next version, what's the next option. And so we're constantly looking at that and trying to figure out how can we not use some of these common ways to make it better going forward. All right. Well, John, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Fantastic. We appreciate the hosting of it and uh, appreciate the questions. And if there are any other future questions, please reach out. We're happy to help. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Samtech. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.